Today I'm working on the basket rotator of a JLG 800 AJ lift. This is the part that goes between the boom and the basket and allows the basket to move left and right. Uh, I was up there picking some apples and it wasn't quite working right. It would kind of go back and forth, but not really. And then we looked out and realized that oil was squirting out of it. So we knew something was wrong. And when you get around there and look, I can see a Viton, a green Viton O-ring coming out here. So obviously something's failed in here and uh, we want to get this replaced and back in service. So we've taken it out. This, there's a, a, a pin top and pin at the bottom on the boom side. And then this part here uh, has a large pivot bolt that uh, connects the basket to the rotator. So we've pulled it off the machine. There's three uh, dash four um, quarter inch hydraulic lines and, and here it is. So if you get the pins out, then on the basket, the basket's two pieces of metal. Uh, you can take that pivot bolt out and then there's uh, a bunch of cap screws that just go in the top to prevent it from from rotating. So uh, we're going to get this thing torn down and uh, uh, try to rebuild it. Try is the operative word here. So I want to say one thing about JLG. JLG has got to be the best heavy equipment company I have ever seen for their free access to information. You can go on the JLG uh, website and they will give you all the operator's manuals all the maintenance manuals, all the parts manuals, uh, so that you have all the information. A lot of companies want to charge you for all of that stuff. They'll give you the operator's manual maybe, but uh, they don't give you anything else. Also, JLG has uh, a website for buying parts and they'll sell parts to you direct. Super easy to use, lots of pictures. Uh, so you can go to the parts manual for your machine, find the parts you need, order them right from JLG.com. I believe that's what it is. I'll put the the URL down there. So uh, out of the manual for this particular unit, I've downloaded their um, Boom and Platform Rotator Assembly instructions and gives you a nice theory of operation and then goes into what tools you need and and then um, you know drawings and, and how to do it. So that's what we're going to do. I bought, uh, they had a rebuild kit for um, for this particular rotator assembly. So we got that, I guess it's just everything's in here. A lot of O-rings, seals. These things are kind of neat. The way they work, you know, it's, you'd think there'd be like a hydraulic motor in there and like a rack and pinion drive or something. It's not how it works. It's, it's, it's still a hydraulic cylinder. Uh, so I think it'll become obvious how it works once we get it apart, if we get it apart. So, uh, I think at first I want to take this uh, uh, take this off there. This is a safety valve. So essentially, uh, on a lot of these things that are life safety related, uh, if a hose was to break, you wouldn't want it to just fall. So uh, this safety valve essentially holds all the oil inside here uh, and does not allow things to change unless it sees that differential pressure across both hoses. So um, makes it so that it's safer. So let's get this pulled off of here. And uh, when you're gonna start doing any hydraulic work, I think it's important to just go ahead and pour some hydraulic fluid all over your head and uh, you know just really get it started. What size is that? Hmm.
Okay, so that safety valve is really just held on there with uh, three socket head cap screws, not Allen bolts, there's no such thing, and is sealed to the working ports of the rotator just with a couple O-rings. So I'm, gonna, I'm not even gonna take that apart any further. That's just gonna stay like that. We've got new O-rings in the kit, so put that to the side. Let's see if we can get any fluid out of this. Okay, in the instructions here, it talks about taking out these two socket head screws and then underneath there is like a, I think it's a dowel rod, let's say, right here and then right here that we need to, that we need to get out. And the way they say to get that out is to drill a hole in it and put an easy out and use an easy out with a uh, I guess like a tap handle to kind of rotate and work it out. Uh, and then there's also these two screws here, but it doesn't seem like I can get my hex key in there. It's like a heavy wax or something on that. So let's clean that out first so we can get the hex key in. Uh, I guess it's paint. It's not wax. It's just got some paint over it. I wonder if this unit's been rebuilt before. Maybe not.
those some little bitty things there. We'll talk more about these in a second here. I think the purpose of these center ones is just to hold those pins in place. Yeah, so there's a dowel pin in there that's maybe maybe a little bit <clears throat> a little bit bigger than a quarter. And so what they want us to do is drill into those dowel pins and then use an easy out. I was trying to center punch those, but I think that's actually counterproductive because it just knocked them in there further. But that tells me that they're not really that crazy tight in there. So. And they're soft, it drills easy. They say if it won't come out with the easy out, you can use a 5 16 drill bit and just hog the whole thing out. All right, we'll try it with the easy out. I hate these things. Okay, that one I can't even drill because it's rotating. So <clears throat> that one may come out pretty easy. Now in general, I'm not a fan of this thing they call the easy out. To me, the last thing you want to do is break off a hardened tool <coughs> into your bolt. So I'm just turning, it's, it's bit, it bit into that pin and it's coming out. So I kind of get a bite on it and then I kind of pull it a little bit. It's coming. So that's what we've got there. We've got a pin that's uh, soft and we've drilled and we worked the easy out in it and just kind of gently pulled it out. So what they're saying is you could just bore the whole thing out if you needed to, if you got caught. <clears throat> this one up here is turning when I try to drill it. So I don't know if I'll be able to get the easy out into it, but if it's turning that easy, it's a good sign.
I'm kind of pulling up while I turn on this and oh. Probably a little bit of a ridge on here and it just won't let me pull it out. Try it with the left-handed drill bit here. There she goes. That's kind of what you're going for there. Okay, pins out. So, <clears throat> now what we got to do here, this cap is supposed to unscrew out of this body. So, the screws you took out here on the outside. They give you a tool in here with the rebuild kit. Now, I'll caution you that for any particular model of JLG lift, they may have several different revisions of the rotator that they used. <clears throat> so this one is just for mine. Okay, so here's the new pins they give you. Dowel pins to locate. And then they give you these tools. This is something you just use for this and that's it. Socket head cap screw. A little bit of an angle. Those go in there. <clears throat> and then we use some sort of barring tool in there to unscrew that. All right, so what we're going to try here, I got my dad, and we're going to try to stick this pin in here just to give us a little more to hold on to here. Uh, and then I'm going to stick this in here and we're going to try to try to loosen it. Oh, well that was easy. <laughs> okay, well that was easy. So as I'm doing this, the, the dowel locations have gotten offset a little bit. There we go. So I think that center part rotated to the end stop. Mm. And now as we're doing this, where the two, <clears throat> where that center pin and this outer cap, where that dowel pin went half and half through there, those are now, those are now split. I was expecting a fight, Dad. <laughs> it's all itching for a fight. Okay, and when I'm taking this off here, it looks like this has got internal threads in here. 
So this part isn't threaded to the body, it's actually threaded to that center part, which for lack of a better word, because I don't really know what's in there yet. Okay, unscrew the end cap, it says. Remove the end cap. Okay, so remove the end cap. All right, remove end cap and set it aside for later. So what I see immediately here is there's a couple locator rings on the inside of that body. And then there's a seal right here and maybe a packer behind that. But, uh, oh, and yeah, there's, some, uh, there's a Viton O-ring in there. <coughs> okay, so that may seal against that part of the body. So, so there we go. And there's an O-ring inside there as well. So not going to take any of that stuff off yet. I'm just going to throw it into the parts washer for now. Thanks, Dad. Yeah, and remember there's a lot of places where they want you to mark from one to another. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> yeah, we'll have to find a way to do that because a marker, I don't know if the marker's going to live, so. Yeah, if you want a center punch. I got one here, yeah. yeah. If it's if it's a surface we can do that on. Okay, Dad. I'll be here tomorrow. Thank you. Okay, so. Remove cap. Remove tube stop if equipped with one. I don't see a tube stop, so. It says the stop tube is an available option to limit the rotation. So this rotates maybe not quite uh, 180 degrees, the, the basket. Uh, yeah, I guess it's less than 180 degrees. I guess as an option, you can get it to where you can restrict that even more. Maybe for some of the specialty lifts or something like that. So uh, the next step is to fully understand how these timing marks work in here. So I'm gonna bring you in here and we're gonna look at this. I'm gonna pour some more of this oil out and see if we can find these timing marks because the engagement between the inner and outer gearing is very important. Okay, so I learned something here. I was looking for what they had in the drawings which showed these sections of the of the gear, let's call it a gear, uh, were up here where you could see them and see some timing marks. Well, I didn't see that. And it, it's because the piston that makes this work is in, let's say, the down position. So the intermediate ring, or the intermediate gear, is pushed back there. So I guess we should have a conversation now about how this thing works. So to turn the hydraulic pressure into a rotary motion, this is actually just a hydraulic cylinder. The bottom part of this, or the inner part, I guess I should say, is a hydraulic cylinder that moves like this. And when that moves in and out, it pushes a ring that is between this outer geared ring and the inner geared ring. It pushes that ring, which, <clears throat> because they're spline the opposite direction, rotates this shaft. So it turns the linear motion in a very short, I mean, I think that piston's maybe only got a couple inches of stroke into 180 degree rotary motion. So I took our little, um, little tool that you get that I had in here that we used to, to rotate that. I took that and I put it at the bottom here. And if I turn it one direction, Okay, there we go. I'm turning it the right direction. The cap wants to come off there. If I turn it in this direction, can you see that that's coming up there? So now I think we can see, we'll be able to see timing marks if I can get this kind of in the right position where it's lined up there. Okay. <clears throat> and if we don't see timing marks, we're going to make timing marks. It may be very difficult to see but someone has made a series of marks. So on the outer teeth right there, you'll see two marks on two teeth. And then you'll see on the inner part, which is called the piston, one mark. Uh, and they don't necessarily line up, but what they're showing you here is that two dots on those two teeth, then they're saying that the piston 
uh, goes between those two dots. And then they've also done the same. There's a dot up there, which is kind of hard to see. And that corresponds when this rotates around to the two dots on the shaft here. So we'll let this be, let this video be my witness here of where those marks are. Now, this is gonna help you once you've gotten it assembled to this far with the new seals and everything to know that you're in the right place. But if you think about it, once we twist this out, out of here, we're gonna need marks on the back end, on this end, so that when we're trying to put it in there and get it rotated, it comes out in the right, right place here. And I don't wanna be playing you know, back and forth. So, you know, and potentially messing the seals up. So when we pull this out, we're also gonna make some marks on the other side if they're not already there. So let's pull this, pist pull this part out and we'll pull the piston out. Okay, so for the alignment for the center piston to the outside, two dots on the outside, a series of three dots on the piston. I just made a couple more here. For the timing relationship between the shaft, I've already got one, or I've got two here on the top of that. You don't have to hit it very hard. And then I've got a series of two dots vertically where it interfaces with the piston. Uh, so I think, I think we've got this here. They talk about marking this with a, a Sharpie, but I don't think that's going to help us any because as soon as I take this out, I'm going to clean it up in the solvent tank. And then when I'm done with that, I'm going to spray it with brake clean. And I don't think that timing mark is going to help us any. But the ones we've got here, I think are going to do it. So now it says remove the shaft, which is also this end cap down here. Okay. That's what this guy looks like, okay? So this is what they call the shaft. It's got this series of helical gears right here got a piston, these two piston seals, and here's our O-ring that started to extrude out, okay? There's a groove there for it, and that started to extrude out, and that's where I had oil coming out, okay? And we can see on here the timing marks that I put in there. And it doesn't look like I'll be able to, doesn't look like I'll be able to see far enough in here to make marks up in there. So we may just have to trial and error it to get this to reference into that. Important thing to note here, because the piston, what they call the piston, which is the center part, which is where the hydraulic fluid acts on, because it's a ring, it's not like a regular hydraulic cylinder where it's just got a solid slug and you've got one seal around it to do it in the bore. It's essentially a cylindrical cylinder. It's a donut. The center of that donut seals on this right here. So this is a polished surface that the O-ring of the ID of the piston donut seals against. And you can kind of see this has uh, some wear marks in it that are helical in nature because as that piston moves up, it rotates. So we'll just have to make sure there's no scoring or anything on that, but it, it, looks, it looks fine. Okay, what's next? Before removing the piston, mark the housing in relation to the piston gear. Okay. Now we need to remove the piston this way. We may need to make something to drive that out carefully. 
Okay, let's turn this guy around here so we can fully understand what's going on. So this here is the bore of the piston. And what we're calling the piston is that center uh, section that has the helical gearing on the outside, which interfaces with the case, and the reverse helical gearing that interfaces on the inside of the piston with the shaft. And we just talked about how this is the piston mating surface for the inside diameter of our cylindrical donut piston. Here is our O-ring that seals between the piston and this part of the shaft. The outside of the donut cylinder seals on this part of the housing. And so the effective area of the hydraulic pressure coming in is right here on this cylinder. It's right there. So as that pushes on on it, and that's where your porting comes in right here, that's your port from this O-ring there, O-ring there, where that bolts on here on the side, you've got your port on the bottom and on the top, you've got your port pushing it the other way. <clears throat> So because the piston and the shaft and the outside are all geared together in the opposite direction, you almost get a two to one effort. For every um, inch of stroke, you get twice the rotational degree um, as you would with the exact same helical gearing here uh, with a single action. So it's kind of a double action, linear to rotary, actuator uh, and so now we need to tap this out they talked about using like a plastic mallet or something but I've got a piece of wood we just don't want to be smacking on the surfaces there so now watch as I knock this out this thing is going to rotate a little bit Okay, there she comes. <clears throat> there it is. So there is our piston. So this goes down on there and seals right there. And as that piston comes up, it rotates on the shaft. And so what they're trying to ensure when you put this back together is that the teeth that were engaged between here and here are the same ones that are engaged when you put it back together. Probably because they wear maybe at different rates. So as this piston gets pushed, it rotates in relation to the, to the shaft. Now you couple that with the gear that's here on the outside. And when this piston pushes, this rotates. There's your rotary motion. <clears throat> so I think now I'm going to clean everything up in the solvent tank, uh, get everything dry where it's not greasy, and then we'll start um, putting some O-rings back on it and hopefully be able to get it back together and get it timed. Before we go and put this in the solvent tank, uh, I want to get these O-rings off of here uh, because there's going to be oil trapped behind there and whatnot. So might as well not do it twice. So let's let this be our video record of what O-rings are in here. Now this is a hydraulic cylinder. This does get the high pressure. So it's not just a simple O-ring. In this case, it's an O-ring with a backup ring on both sides. And so here you can see there's a slit in it. <clears throat> Sometimes these have a groove that retains the O-ring on the face, and sometimes they're the same on both sides. This one seems to be the same on both sides. Uh, so you could call that a backup ring, I guess. Uh, and so if we move like this, we're gonna, yep, there's the other backup ring, okay. And then there's an O-ring in there. Now I'm using this pick here. It's not sharp. I usually 
try to not use stuff that's real sharp because you could potentially scratch something but this this one's not sharp so I'm just gonna get that guy in there and get the o-ring out now because this has got these backup rings on it this has actually got a little different um, a little different form to it so it's it's kind of like an o-ring but it's a form ring uh, it's got these shoulders on it so it kind of holds those um, piston rings if you will tight in there on that shoulder so that is on the OD of our piston and then we've got something similar in here for the ID of our piston these are a little trickier to get out but same thing There we go. Now we can get that guy cleaned up. Okay, so let's let this be our video record on the piston end. Or excuse me, on the shaft end. I guess this is they call this the shaft. I'm going to take those tools off of there. Okay, so this one seems to have this Viton ring here, and that's the one that, that came out. Now I'm not saying that's the only failure, but that was that was what I noticed was that Viton being extruded out the housing. Okay, so we've got that, and then we've got these two rings here, which are I'm not sure why they have this ring in here because this is normally what's like on the. Uh, on the rod in it's kind of a more of a positional reference type thing than a than an actual seal um, <clears throat> and there's really not a danger of mixing these up here because these are only going to fit in one place so we got one of those and then this other one here I think is an even different uh, thickness so this one has failed okay yeah this one has failed see there's a big chunk coming out of it there this is probably the main pressure seal so there's this kind of backup ring thing here with an o-ring inside of it and that one is probably our failure point okay i believe the way these work is oil pressure gets behind it which forces the o-ring to swell out and and this seal to, to take bite, I guess, for lack of a better word. So it's kind of a, a an pressurized oil piloted seal. And it looks like that was our failure here. Uh, so this Viton ring really was just a victim, I think. It wasn't the cause, it was the result of that. And then there's some sort of um, backup ring, I guess we'll say. I'm going to leave those separate so I know that that's part of the same thing. And is there another feature in here? No, maybe not. Okay, that was it. And then, there's something in there? No, maybe it's just some gook. Yeah, okay. And there's a groove there. Okay. Yep, so, there was a locating ring. Uh, locating ring. And then there was this two-part seal, kind of an oil-piloted seal that had failed, that was probably our failure. And then there's that Viton with a uh, kind of a locating feature ring, I guess. That guy's ready to get cleaned up too. <clears throat> so then the last thing we're gonna have, and this is gonna be a real similar scenario to that shaft, you're gonna have your locating ring. And that's, that's a hard plastic, this does not seal um, fluid at all and then we're going to have this oh oops, see that one's failing too yeah look at that that's just totally brittle <clears throat> well that's coming apart in pieces and it's always good to find a smoking gun right that guy can come out of there along with the sealing ring 
pieces, pieces, pieces. And then we've got this Viton ring. And then we've got this retention feature. And a little bit of corrosion in that there, probably because it was just seeping under that cap. But that'll be okay, that'll clean up okay. Last feature we've got then is in here, we've got an O-ring. And <clears throat> that is going to seal the tip of our shaft here as it comes through this, because you know those are like that. So the tip of this shaft is what seals on that ring. And this one kind of looks like, you see that? It's got a backup ring and it's got an O-ring. <clears throat> and the O-ring is towards the shaft and the backup ring is towards the outside, okay? let's. Remember that, I'm going to ask you later. So we've got an O-ring, which looks, looks like a round O-ring. And then we've got a backup ring. And the backup ring was towards the outside. Okay, and let's take a look at this backup ring. This may or may not have a slightly depressed feature here that the O-ring sits into. It may not. No, it's on that side. Did I take that out wrong? No, maybe not. Well, now I'm not sure. Hopefully it shows in the drawing. Or are there two rings in there? No, it looks like it's a single-sided backup ring. So it's a round O-ring and a backup ring, which may or may not have been installed correctly. I could have swore that that was on that side. And if that's true, it was in the wrong place because I think it looks like it's slightly depressed there from this being sitting on the wrong place. I bet this has been rebuilt before and they didn't have that in right. So on this backup ring, there's a slight depressed feature here that the O-ring sits into. I don't think that was on right. We'll find out. And so now this is completely stripped as well and can get cleaned up. And... There's nothing on the housing. The housing's got nothing on this side. There's no seals or anything. Although there's a little bit of a gook line here. So we might try to just stone that a little bit with some, uh, um, oh, I don't know, some um, 3M um, scotch Bright. That's what I'm trying to say. Some scotch Bright. Let me show you this other side here of the housing. A little bit of corrosion here. This is probably, I think, the top side, so, you know, water sits here and it maybe kind of came in there. So, um, this right here is not a surface that a piston or anything rides on. Um, it's really just space. Um, so, and it, it is on the hydraulic side of uh, the piston pushing that way. So, it's always got oil in it, but if we come in here and we do a little bit of that with scotch Bright. I don't think we'll harm anything. Same thing within here. We want that to seal well. So, uh, but what I was gonna show you was there is a weld down in here. It's kind of interesting. So they must make this helical gear section, put it in the barrel, and then robotically weld it like that. So that's why that looks a little weird like that. It is just a weld section. So, um, cleanup time and let's get everything uh, clean and dry and then we'll start putting some stuff back together.
Okay, I've learned a little more here. I did some more reading on the manual and I learned some more. So, 
what I learned. This O-ring here was the one that we took out of this edge. And that is just to seal this in the housing. So it's just to seal this from the housing because this part rotates and this part rotates against the housing. So this is really, this is not a hydraulic seal. This is an environmental seal to try to prevent water from getting between this cap and the housing. So on ours where this ring, which is the pressure ring had failed, it just blew this O-ring out. This is never meant to take any hydraulic pressure whatsoever. So, one thing I noticed was that in here, you've got a little bit of corrosion and there was a little bit on the housing as well. Uh, so I cleaned those up as best as I could. I used some 320 grit paper. I actually took this over to the lathe and I chucked it in there and I just, uh, I put some of this on a stick and just kind of held it in there uh, and, and clean that up just so it's a little more smooth. I, feel, I think it'll still be fine. This one, there's quite a bit less on there, but I still stoned that one a little bit. So now it brings me up to the next point. This is what they call a wear ring. And it's, uh, it feels like it's um, like a ultra high molecular weight plastic, a very dense plastic. And this is what goes right there. I thought it was a backup ring for, for this, but it is not. This is the thrust ring there and here that uh, basically keeps this housing or keeps this completed housing because remember those screw together it keeps that completed housing come on like right there uh, that's what rides on the <clears throat> on the uh, the coupler housing these are kind of bad shape so it's got a, this one's got a groove on the outside here and it's extruded in on there. This one, it's kind of the same thing. I'm not gonna reuse these. It's not worth it. We're here, might as well get new ones. So I'm getting two new wear rings. The other thing I'm gonna get that doesn't come in the kit, I'm gonna get these four cap screws. Not saying they couldn't be reused, but they're probably a few cents each. So I'm gonna get those. So let's do this. Let's put some seals on here. So I've got everything cleaned. Got our piston clean. And here we've got our O-rings. <clears throat> but first, let's talk about this ring that goes down in here. Remember we talked about that where I thought that they had it in there backwards and I wanted to make sure that we get it in there the correct way. So if you look at the blown up diagram, they're showing this piece in that orientation. Here's your two rings, 204 O-ring, 207 backup ring. So the backup ring is closest to the outside and the O-ring is in here. And let me show you the orientation that that's in. I'm going to draw this piece here first. So we've got our piece like that. Okay, and here's our, that's the outside here, and this is the inside, so this is the in, this is the out. <clears throat> I've got that screwed up, that's the out, this is the in, okay, because we're looking at a cross section of this piece here, like that. So what I'm showing you here is that groove. I'm not showing you any of these other features, just that groove. So we said the backup ring was right here. So the backup ring goes right there. And it, it has a little feature like that. You're gonna wanna watch for this little feature like that. And then the O-ring goes right here, okay? This may not be to scale here. So that's what you gotta look for in here. If you were to take that backup ring and cut it, it would look like, probably more like this. And then your O-ring goes like that. And so in this case, the backup ring is towards the 
outside here. And the O-ring is towards the inside. So let's find and identify all this stuff here. O-ring, O-ring. Okay, I think those are our O-rings that go right here and right here. Pressure seal. Pressure seal. I bet those are the same. They are the same. These may be a different style. Yeah, these are a different style too than, than that. Um, these are probably the same size. Yep, that's the ring that goes here and here. Got those. Okay, here we go. Now we're getting into... That is one of our... That is our outside piston ring. That's this one right here. And then we've got an inside. That one goes in here. Boom, got that. And then here's what we were talking about. Boy, it's... I don't know if you'll be able to see this. That's flat on that side. And on this side, it's got a little bit of a dish. So that goes with the O-ring. And... What did we say? This this backup ring was going to go towards the outside. Okay. So we got that. Okay. I think that I'm going to try to put this together with some of that stuff there. This is just transmission assembly goo. Just to kind of keep it together. Oh, let's see. Let's do this one first. This one's going to be easy. Okay. This one is going to be easy. I do this without gloves because I think it, it helps. So we're going to do this inside guy first here. Okay, so that one is going to go in there like that. And then it is going to get piston ring on each side. I call it a piston ring. This is just a plastic backup ring, but notice it's got a little angle to it there. So you don't want to install it like that. or It only should overlap that one way. Get her greasy. So on this, we need to put this one in there first. Okay, we're going to make sure that's totally in there. And then I'm going to put the one on the bottom. You can just kind of rotate it into place there. Okay, that one's good. And I don't think you even have to do this, but... That one's over there, so we're going to make this one go over here. Get that dropped into the groove. Boom, there we go. Fully in there. This assembly lube just makes sure everything goes together and doesn't tear. And that... Uh, there's enough there to just lubricate it before you get everything else. This is what people with build automatic transmissions would use. Okay, so this guy is going to go on the outside. Like that. Get one of them started. This part's real easy. Hard to mess that up. Okay. This one goes over here. Done. Okay, there we go. That one's done. Piston. Okay, this part's a little more difficult. Let's do... So, I think it's probably the hardest thing is to get this on there. Okay? Because this is the hardest one to get on there, I think we should do it first. I think we should do it first. Question is, which way does it go? I think it goes in there like this. The fat side up. That is my guess. 
That is my guess. Because that's kind of how the other one was in there. Yeah, the other one is in there like this. With that O-ring presser groove. Wasn't it? Boy, you got me thinking now. Which way was it? Boy, you want to get that right, don't you? I may need to check on that. I could have swore that it was on that way, and now I can't remember. Nope, I'm satisfied. Okay. These are hard to these are hard to do. These are hard to do. This is why they tell you to make a seal tool. We'll see what we need here. Get her lubed up pretty good. You basically just have to work this down and around and in. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> the grease helps, but it doesn't. Okay. Gonna have to make one of those seal tools. All right, I think I might be ready to assemble now. Uh, I had to stop and order some parts. Had to order these little guys here, these thrust uh, bearing rings. They were kind of extruded. Uh, let's see what we got here. Got some new screws to secure the end caps. I also decided to get these bushings that go here and here. 
they were cheap. What was not cheap, though, were these rings. They do not sell these rings by themselves. You had to get them as part of the, they called it the bearing kit. And what that is, <clears throat> is these two rings here, which, okay, they've got a little bit of a lip on them. Uh, but these are obviously not extruded like these are, so those are going in the trash. Uh, but then it also includes these two rings, which we already had, uh, that go in here. So those are duplicates. But then it comes with these. I'm not sure where these go. Where do those go? Man. I don't exactly understand because that appears to go there. I wonder if there's a couple different styles to this. Because ours only had that in it. That looks to be like this. True boy. I am not sure. Or is this a two-piece assembly? I don't think there's room in there for two pieces. End cap, stop tube. Hmm. Zero four one wiper seal. Okay, we got that. Wiper seal three oh four thrust washer. Two oh five cup seal. I have no idea where this ring goes. No idea. I also don't know which way this goes. There's kind of a feature here on one side, but then there's also a feature on that side. Hmm. If I put it in that way, O-ring doesn't touch anything. If I put it in that way, it definitely touches the O-ring. Man, <laughs> I don't know. Jeez. Could it be both? Maybe it's both, I don't know. I don't think we've got room for both. No, I guess we do. We do have room for both. I don't think both of my seals were in there. I think it was only one piece. I don't know. Maybe we Maybe we do, maybe we don't. That sure seems to go in there. If that goes in there, Sure looks like it would do that. Hmm. Well, that we're just going to have to figure out. Hmm. Okay, well, certainly uh, I'm not helping you much there, am I? Because I don't know what I'm doing. So, we got another thing going on here. The next thing we got to do is get this cup seal in there, I think. Although, we got to figure this out first, don't we? We got to figure this out because once we put that cup seal in there, we're not going to be able to take this stuff on and off. That is, we're going to lose the ability to put that on and off. Hmm. I almost wonder if there's two styles. 
because if I put this one in here, this one I think is, this is the one that's totally flat. I think that's the one we're supposed to use because this O-ring then contacts this face. And that's how I remember it being. And then you put, you put grease in there for the rest of that. And if I put that in there, And then this, it really sticks up. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to assemble these together. Like that. And then I'm going to measure this. And I'm going to see what kind of room we've got here. And I'm going to consult the parts diagram again. Okay, back from the computer. I learned some things. Number one, uh, they do not show in any of the parts manuals or anything two of these uh, thrust washers. So I wonder if that thrust washer kit that, that I get, that I got, uh, actually fits two models. And so some of them have the one type of seal, some of them have the other type of seal. What I did here was drop the one thrust washer down in that groove and put the other thrust washer over it. I did that on both sides and then I measured out here and I assembled this together and this build up here is way too thick. I can get it to work if I don't screw this on the whole way but this is really supposed to be flush with that so that that's just out. The other thing I learned is that, just as I thought, this actuator is not built by JLG. They buy it from Parker, and it's a series called HELAC, H-E-L-A-C, and so it's a hydraulic rotary actuator. Looks like Parker bought HELAC a few years back. Uh, the good news is, all this stuff in here is directly from Parker. Uh, in fact, you can buy the parts directly from Parker and they're less expensive than JLG. This is an L20-8.2 model. And the Parker uh, book on that repair for that is much more detailed than this one from JLG. Now this one is directly, the pictures and everything, directly from Parker. I will link down below the manual from, directly from Parker so you can see that. And if you wanted to order parts directly from Parker, you could. So it looks like this does just drop directly on there. And uh, then you shoot the grease in the back. So I guess these are indeed out. Um, yep, they just, they just don't go. <clears throat> Very confusing though when they include them in there. So especially since these new ones look kind of like the old ones except they're just extruded out so anyway so I do have to put that on there before we start getting the main cup seal in there and these things I think are just difficult to get on and I just don't have much experience with it so According to their directions, I made this screwdriver to help. So I bent it in two axes. I bent it like this a little bit, and I also bent it like that. Because what my goal is, is to get that thing and be able to hook this part of the screwdriver up under there and basically roll the seal in. Uh, and I've polished this so that it hopefully will not tear anything up there. The other thing I've been told is to lubricate these and also to heat them in some hot water. So let's give that a try.
Okay, she's warm. I've also got some transmission assembly grease here I thought I'd put on this thrust washer. This thrust washer is not in the lubricating oil path of anything. It is just <clears throat> part of the, uh, the grease that goes in the end. All right, maybe it's a little better. Hmm. Okay, that that went better than I thought. Boy. Okay. <laughs> I won't complain about that. So now we've got these. I think these are the same. They gotta be the same. The bore that's the same. So boom, get that guy on there. Okay, so I've got the they call it the exclusion seal, but this I was calling it the environmental o-ring around the outside we've got the thrust washer got the cup seal and we've got the bushing or the bearing now we can do the same to this all right I think first though I'm gonna get these seals out here That's literally just a bushing for that uh, large bolt to ride in. So if you're looking for more information on this stuff, uh, or if you're just looking for somebody to rebuild this for you that's not JLG, your best bet is to look for uh, somebody who repairs HELAC, H-E-L-A-C. That is the trade name for this type of actuator as manufactured by Parker. And this is a HELAC L20-8.2. 
that will give you a lot better results, I think, than trying to search for someone that rebuilds JLG actuators, maybe. Okay, so in here with this O-ring, environmental seal. I'm just using a little uh, automatic transmission rebuild jelly. It's real thick and heavy bodied. It stays, makes stuff stay put. That's kind of why I use it. Um, then our, our ring here, thrust washer. This is gonna get grease, greased. They say lithium grease. I think you can use a regular grease. I'm gonna use a regular grease. Something else good for this would be like Lubriplate 105. It's like a white creamy lubricant you would uh, um, use for, let's say, uh, rebuilding engines. Um, okay, we got those in there. We've got our cup seal marinating over here. Let's uh, let get just a little lube in these grooves here. Yes, that is a dog dish and a propane torch. If I was in the UK, I'm sure I would have a kettle. I'll just put the kettle on the boil, but uh, guess what? Not in the UK. Boy, what a difference that makes. Wow. Combination of this tool and a little bit of heat in there. Okay, come on down to the lower side. Boom, boom, right at you. Okay, there we go. Bearing, nice, all right.
Okay, looks like last thing we need to do is get this O-ring and seal into there. Uh, I remember we were talking about that earlier. And we figured out that the O-ring seal is on the outside and the backup ring no the backup ring is in first so we got to watch for that little o-ring groove so we're going to put that in and then the o-ring okay o-ring towards the inside yes sure that's in there without being twisty nice okay that o-ring seals right against that okay I think we're ready for assembly now um, I did make some timing marks Okay, the first thing I want you to do is put the piston in. All right, so we've got our marks here. We've got that mark, and then we've got this set of marks. So that mark needed to reference to where these two dots are. Which means it's got to come up this groove here okay so that there up that groove Clean oil in there. All right, so the key to this is I know that that mark there has to end up at a certain place here. So I've got to kind of watch it as it goes in and get it going up the right. It's hard to show this to you here. First thing I got to do is get it started in the bore without messing up any of the o-rings Ah, okay, no, it's that one there. All right. I 
got to rotate it a little bit. I don't even know if that's possible. Just using this as a wrench to kind of turn that. Okay. Too far. That's right there. Mm. That's hard to get started. Those fit really well. There they go. So hopefully they end up in the right place here. Ugh. But let's make everything slippery. Okay, I'm not sure if you can see this in here. Those timing marks line up now. So the timing marks from the piston to the outer part line up. And now I've got another timing mark for my <clears throat> chaff. Okay. All right, so that one we've got. Now we can get the shaft in. There's my timing mark on the shaft. So I've got to engage that into this other set of timing marks that I've got here. Which is a little difficult because we're doing it from the side that you can't really see. But I have made a mark <clears throat> on the gear itself. That 
maybe we can see. Oh, yeah, there it is. Mark. There it is. There's my okay. Now we have to put our barring tool back on there again. Get some good grease on there. Okay, I had a little oopsie there. I started putting the shaft in the wrong direction. Duh. Got it in there right now. <clears throat> Got it in there correctly. And all my timing marks line up. Inside, outside, everything. Okay. So now they want you to rotate this in, which should also seat the, the seal here. It's a little difficult to get started. Okay. We need the rubber mallet for that. So essentially as we're turning this, we've also got to get the cup seal started. So, I'm going to turn it while pushing and thumping. That is not easy to do.
just can't get those seal lips to start. I almost may have to put that in the press. Okay, that was not as easy as they said. Okay. Like it was there. Okay. Boom.
Okay, so now they say we can just thread that guy in there. How's that? Once that pressure seal gets in that bore, I think it'll get easier. I think that was it. I almost went past it there. That's flush. I think that may be it. A little bit of a gap there. It's not touching though. Maybe I do have to go a little more. One thing I did notice is these uh, these seals were not quite as uh, tall as the other one. Oh, I think that's too tight. Yeah, that's too tight. Too much. Too much. Never mind. Never mind. Okay. Okay, so it's in there. It's lined up. I am pretty sure now that we can put in the lock pins. So that's these guys here. There's one side up that's got a dimple that goes to the top. So it's a dimple side, dimple side up. That helps you drill it out the next time you got to rebuild this, which for me will hopefully be never.
There we go. Let's get a punch. That guy's fighting. Okay. I was going to put a little thread locker in there, but I don't think I will. I think that'd be too much. Never know, I may have to take this right back apart again. <laughs> Hope not. Okay, so now, now we got to grease it. It's just those two set pins. You don't do those yet. Install counterbalance live valve. Greasing thrust washers. It's under here. So they want you to put the grease gun there and put grease in until it comes out over here. All right, we'll try it. We got some grease coming out over there. Maybe it's working. I think we're out of grease. Take two, more grease. All right, let's see how this works here. Now that we got some grease. Oh, hey, must have had some in there before. Good, okay. Well, now we know we got grease all the way around that thrust washer assembly. All right, do that side. All right, then they want you to cycle the actuator. Not sure that's gonna happen.
Okay, so I continue to put grease in here and I've cycled the actuator a couple times both ways. I made a mark up here on this part which rotates and I made a mark there. The uh, reason I made the mark there, first of all there's a little dot there. This goes all the way over and hits a lock right there, 90, and then it goes over and hits a lock right here at 90. So this, uh, this really tells us our timing marks were lined up correctly because at, at one piston stroke when the piston is all the way at the bottom, this is all the way to full lock. And <clears throat> when it's up at the top stroke, it's all the way full lock right. It's a 180 degree actuator. That's pretty cool because uh, that really reinforces that we got the timing marks right. Now, if this thing had been off a little bit, uh, we, you know, we might have been in trouble. And, you know, you may think, well, why, why do we care, right? Well, when you put this on the basket, if your holes here aren't lined up quite right, you could get in a situation where your basket only goes, you know, so far this way, but then it goes too far the other way and hits the jib. Uh, so, so this is this is good. So I manually cycle the actuator back and forth a few times. I'm going to put a little bit more grease in here, make sure that it comes out the other side, and then we'll do that on the other side. <laughs> She's full. <laughs> I can see it coming out the side, so. Lovely. Screws don't get too much, they get 25 foot pounds, which that's not not too terrible much, so <clears throat> no problem here. And they also can't back out, so because the flange goes over there. That side is done. We're going to do one more little thing here and see if she's full. That's full. So the last thing we have to do is put on the valve. Ugh. Here's the valve. I believe the valve goes on like that. Could be wrong. 
guessing it goes on like that. I'll have to look. That's the shaft in there, which means that. I don't remember which way that went. Somebody's screaming at me. Well, it can't go that way. Okay, it goes that way. All right, so that was easy. Uh, they don't sell these O-rings separate, so I kind of had to figure out what it was. Uh, from what I can tell, it is a dash 111. So a dash number 111 O-ring. Easy to get. Whole bag of 100 was like three bucks or something uh, so pop those guys in there And these do get some thread locker. I cleaned those up. These are grade eight. Nothing on the O-rings. O-rings will be fine. And this, this thread locker is not to seal the threads. There's no fluid where that is. It's just to ensure that it doesn't come off. Um, you know, if you were on the lift and the rotator failed, I mean, it's probably not the worst cylinder or actuator to fail, but I still don't think you want it to fail. I'd still rather not. Okay, so really then the only thing left would be <clears throat> put it in and bleed it. Now, we do have these ports here on the side, uh, and what I'm thinking is, I think I'm going to fill these ports with some hydraulic fluid. I'm going to just fill those up, <clears throat> give it a little tappy tap to get the air out, and then put my plugs in. Uh, and then I'll really be, uh, really be well along in the bleeding process. The other thing I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to identify which of these two lines is the in and the out, and I'm going to connect them together with a Dash 4 coupler. And then I'm going to fire the machine up and I'm going to operate the left and right control and what that's going to do is it's going to burp any oil out to the tank because when you're actuating one function the other is open to tank so that hydraulic fluid is going to just be going through to tank going through to tank I mean you could hold that down for two minutes if you wanted bleeding it out that way then we're going to bleed it the other way probably out of air anyway but we're going to bleed it that other way this is going to be full uh, this is going to be full of uh, fluid so we shouldn't really have to bleed much in here and then we're going to get this on there and then we're going to just take our connectors off and put them right in there so the amount of air will be minimal and then there is a bleeding instruction in here as well so uh, 
Yeah, and, and the way you're gonna know if you've got a lot of air in the system is if you've got backlash. If, if you can grab the platform and move it a bunch, uh, you know you've got some, some air in the system or a leaking, uh, a leaking seal. But very much, you know, after we rebuild it here, we're pretty, <laughs> pretty sure that the seals are good. So uh, you, would, you would then suspect air. So, uh, so let's get this thing, uh, get some fluid in there, and then we'll get it in the unit and see if we can get it working. I'm going to try to just put some light motor oil in there. It's going to be totally fine. It's not the exact same fluid, probably, as what was in it, but we're going to get that so that that is the highest point there. That's the highest point. And we're going to go find our little pluggies here for when we're done. Those are little pluggies. Okay. And our actuator's in the middle, so we should have a good amount of room on both sides to put oil in. Refill. Oop, there she is. A couple of air bubbles there. This is going to save you a lot of time bleeding it on the machine.
Now, if I put my bolts in there again and I started turning it, we'd have fluid coming out one side and sucking in the other. So we kind of just want to leave it alone right now. Let's wait for some bubbles to come out, put the plugs in, and we are done. All right, I got this machine inside because it's like negative 20 degrees outside and I'm kind of getting it all cleaned up and ready to put on. Had some trouble with uh, getting the pins out of this, uh, out of this lower arm here. Uh, well, actually out of both of them. Uh, they use a thing here they call a composite bearing. Um, so in this one, for instance, this is, a, this is uh, the pin and the steel and the composite bearing is in the, in the rotator section. Up here, the composite bearing is in, uh, is in this part and then the steel is on the, is on the rotator. But, long story short, uh, there's no grease in any of these composite bearings. Um, and this connection here has just got a bolt. This, bolt, this connection does not rotate, uh, so it rusts. And then the pin is hard to get out. So I had to make a custom press uh, that I could stick a little four ton hydraulic jack in and I was able to get the pin out, but it was not something I wanted to do outside when it was negative 20. So I did buy this one inch Dingleberry home from McMaster Car, uh, and I'm using that and some uh, brake clean just to clean out these. And I've uh, taken the pins and cleaned them out on the wire brush wheel. They look pretty good. They go in there real nice now. Okay, and then I just kind of cleaned this up a little bit. And I bought myself new grade eight bolts, three eighths by one inch. And Mr. Rotator's ready to go back in there. Uh, reminder that we've got the rotator right in the center of its um, right in the center of its travel. My marks are lined up there. So when I put this in square ways, my bolts should line up and make sense. Okay, yep, so right about there, the bolts line up. Stick one of those in there. Well, there's a lot of play in there, vertically. Okay. <clears throat> Get the old pin to drop down in there.
Of course I got, got it on me. Hold this and try to get it in position so I can run the rod in, okay? How do you gotta move it to get it there? Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I know. I was screaming at you. <laughs> Could I have a couple of those tungsten carbide things? The, the, the broken ones in the little tin? All right.
So I'm wondering now if I have more than one issue. <clears throat> you probably noticed when I grabbed the basket here, it was able to just swing and rotate. Uh, I'm thinking that that is probably supposed to be controlled by a, like an overpressure valve in the, in this valve block. Um, so it should really stay where it's, where it's put, but uh, I can't remember what they call that, but it's like a back drag valve. And if you try to put power into it, um, like on a drive motor, if you were rolling down a hill or something, uh, it would, you know, attempt to break that hydraulic flow, but it would open up after a certain point. So I'm wondering if that's something that's happening here. Um, so what I'm gonna to try to do now, I wanna bleed the air out of these lines, but there's three lines going in. I don't know which lines are the, the forward and reverse lines. And then another one is maybe just a case drain or something. Um, but uh, so to find out, I'm gonna stick these three hoses down in this bucket and I'll get in there and I'll work the control back and forth. Once I find out which two lines are the forward and reverse, I'm gonna put this in between them and then I can go back and forth and bleed air out of the whole lines. So I did put marks on these, so this is number two. I think this is the one that's like the, uh, maybe it's like a case drain or it's a brake pickup or something. So I think it's those two. We'll, we'll find out here pretty rapidly. Okay, I was correct. It is those two lines. So it's the outer two lines on the block here. Uh, and not very much oil comes out. These, if you look at the hydraulic diagram, these have a 0.2 gallons per minute restrictor in them. So uh, there's not much displacement in this cylinder. So it doesn't come out very fast. So by doing this and working the control for left side, for a while, it will force air bubbles back into the tank, and then we'll do it to the right side, and it would force air bubbles that way. Uh, you probably don't really need to do it both ways. Uh, one way would be sufficient, but. All right, so with these uh, two lines connected together, I ran the hydraulic in either direction for 30 seconds. All right, so this is the one I labeled two, which I think is this one. Yeah, I put a couple dink marks in it. Oh shoot, that's got a, that's got a pit. I didn't have any JIC plugs and caps, so I stuck a silicone plug in there.
Okay, I labeled the bottom one one and the top one three. This one's three. Well, that's plenty messy. <clears throat> Andrew? Messy. Well, I'd say that's a success. <laughs> There's not oil squirting out of it everywhere anymore, which is a good thing. Uh, I'm gonna do a little more testing on it because I wanna make sure that, uh, that I wasn't just imagining things there when, when I was able to move the basket back and forth. Uh, but maybe that was just uh, air coming in and out um, from underneath my little ports, uh, port covers before I 
uh, hook the hydraulic up to it. I do think I need to maybe bleed that last little bit of air out of it. There's a procedure in the manual. Uh, it talks about making a bleeder fitting. Um, on the, the side of the actuator, there's two ports. Uh, those are the ports we uh, filled the oil in from when we uh, bench bled it. Uh, those are a uh, uh, dash four O-ring boss fitting. So probably get some O-ring plugs and uh, machine them to put a little um, bleeder nipple in them uh, and do that bleeding procedure just to get that last little bit of air out of there so it's not, just so it doesn't feel spongy. Uh, from what I can tell, uh, they used um, only two styles of these rotary actuators in all of these JLG machines. So uh, this should cross over to, to almost any machine that you've got. And it would be the same for a lot of the Genie lifts as well. Uh, this particular machine is a 600 AJ. Uh, and so this uses what I think they call the larger actuator. Uh, and then there's a slightly smaller one that they would use on smaller machines. So um, all told with me taking it out, um, I would say if you just sat down and you had all the parts and you were ready to do it, um, you could probably do it in about four hours. So uh, I think if you send your rotator off to be rebuilt by JLG, they charge about $1,700. And from what I see in, the, in the, the manual from Parker and also the manual from JLG, there's not any internal components that they replace. So really it's, it's a reseal and, uh, and check out. So maybe try it yourself. Parts for this, about $350 total for both seal kits that I got, plus a few random O-rings and parts. So uh, good luck, hope this helps and uh, keep those machines going.